Assalamu alaikum, brother Isam. Thank you so much for being here. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you so much for having me. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, so my name is Isam. I'm a performing artist. Uh, I was born in Morocco. I was raised in a city called Seattle, Washington. Beautiful. How long have you been a performing artist for? I mean, I wrote my first rap when I was eight years old. So Mashallah, that was Mashallah. pretty much the introduction to me loving creative arts. Mashallah. And what has inspired you to choose this career field? Um, it's just one of those things that became a part of my life from a young age. It was not a particular like uh, story or situation that, that made me want to become an artist. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you have faced so far? Um, I think it's the uh, fact that it's a new industry for the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. So the fact that, uh, especially as a rapper, people are not really comfortable with uh, rap because of uh, what's what it's associated with in the mainstream. So I think breaking those barriers. Okay, beautiful. And what are some ways to break those barriers? I mean, just be yourself. Be yourself. Uh, okay. And not focus on, on what the people have negative to say about you. If you could give your 18-year-old self a piece of advice, what would that be? When I think of the 18-year-old yeah. me, I, I, like in a way, it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Um, Why does it make you uncomfortable? It's therapy session. <laughs> 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 uh, because I think at 18 years old, I was really like I was caught. It felt like I was I was at the crossroads. It felt like I was in between heaven and hell. Uh, that moment of my life was like like going to determine the rest of my life. You know, so you're um, kind of finding yourself. Finding myself, yeah. and I think just like every teenager is mm -hmm. right at that age. So, um, I, I think I would keep it simple, you know. This, 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 I think I would, if I were to come across my 18 year old self, I would show him some love, you know, um, just because it's important to, to yeah. show people love, right? And how would you balance your, your Muslim identity? with your cultural identity, you mentioned that you were Moroccan, with your American identity, how do you balance all of that? I mean, it's intersectional, it's all a part of me, mm. right? So I don't think I ever intentionally try to balance it, but one of the most important things I try to do is, is prioritize my faith or include faith in everything that I do. Um, so, yeah. What do people misunderstand about you the most? Uh, I think people, when they, <laughs> um, especially from my earlier works, um, I think people kind of, kind of got that vibe that I was, I was, I was more of, of a serious person, mm -hmm. I have a, uh, because of the the essence of the topics I, I speak about in my in my art. Um, but yeah, I think people get shocked when they see the contrast in my character, more bubbly, joyful. If you could be remembered for one thing, what would that be? This, this being kind to people, just being in service to my community. And yeah, just, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, that's a, good a heavy answer. question. That's yeah. a good answer. Who are your top three favorite artists in the music field? Don't say yourself. <laughs> you can't no, say yourself. It never. has to be like three people I, 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 that I would inspired not even put you. Yeah. Up yeah. Um, I mean, I have a uh, top three. Mm. I actually, it's weird because I, mm -hmm. at this moment in my life, I don't listen to anybody. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's kind of hard. Like no, I I I could tell you my influences growing up, mm -hmm. but in terms of like somebody right now, like it's it's very I can't. Yeah, okay. I, I actually don't consume any any uh, music or creative expression. Okay. While growing up, who influenced you, and what kind of an impact did they have on your life? Um, I mean, so one of the groups I grew up listening to was Bone Thugs and Harmony. It's, a, it's this rap group. They did like a melodic, you know, uh, melodic type rap. Like they're very rhythmic and uh, rhythmic, and it had the spiritual element to it. Um, but also talking about like just their experience growing up in in uh, in, in their neighborhoods. Um, so I think I was in terms of how they influenced me. I think I and them and Akon. Akon is another artist mm -hmm. that really inspired me. Um, yeah, in terms of just songwriting and this cadence, I feel like. Um, I mean, you wouldn't be able to to pinpoint my sound to them anymore. Um, but mm -hmm. at that earlier on in my career, people used to be like, or even when I was younger, people, oh, you sound like Bone Thugs. Mm -hmm. I used to try to imitate them. I try to rap like them, you know. Okay, it's very 
understanding. So I, I, def I definitely was a, feel like it was a part of my evolu evolution and development as an artist. If you had the choice, would you rather have more time or more money? Mm, more money. Why more money? So I could be able to funnel it back into my community, my, my dreams, my visions and ambitions. Um, because at the end of the day, like, when nobody's here forever. So even if I were to have more time, there's going to be a moment where I'm not going to be here. So. And if I were to give you a million dollars, what is the first thing that you would do with that money? Make sure my mom has the, the, the right resources that she needs in order to, to live a healthy life. If you could be remembered for one thing, what would that be? I want to be the best at what I do, you know, so I really want to, to be remembered for my innovation in the creative industry. And what is one thing that not a lot of people know about you? There's a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one thing that nobody, not, not a lot of people, oh, mm -hmm. my last name is not really my last name. What's your last name? I'm not, there's a reason why people don't what? know. What? <laughs> what is one ayah or hadith that really resonates with you right now? Verily, with every hardship comes ease. Why did you choose that particular one? Because everybody goes through hardship. And I think that in terms of like this linguistics, like I, I used to think it was after hardship comes ease, but that the word with is, is very important because the hardship never really disappears. And you just learn how to yeah. have ease with the hardship. You know, you, you, you create the strength to be able to, to deal with it, right? What are some things that you do to keep yourself spiritually connected? Prayer. I just try to be on top of my prayer. No matter what I'm doing, no matter how much I slip up, I always remember I got to pray. When it's time to pray, I got to pray. That's, the, that's, that's literally the foundation of my life. And what's the number one issue that the Muslim Ummah right now is facing? And what do you think that we as Muslims should be doing about it? I think there is a lack of unity within our communities. Um, and really, I think we... Um, uh, so how can we unify? How can we come together? Just go back to the teachings of our religion, really. Just the teachings of akhlaq, good character, Beautiful. And, and the importance of this unification coming together and setting aside the differences. Where can people find you online and how can we support you? You could find me on Instagram and Twitter and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mass139, M-A-S-S-E-O-N-E-39. -E and Isam, my YouTube channel. And uh, Spotify and all that. Yeah.